The agenda for this video will be to see the demand planning functionality in NetSuite. We'll start first with the calculation of an item demand plan. Then we'll review the output of that demand plan calculation by NetSuite. And then finally we can see how manual updates or entries can be made into the existing demand plan or created into a new demand plan. We'll be logging into NetSuite by using a web browser and by navigating to www.netsuite.com URL. And that'll bring us to this login screen. Over here, I'll be using my credentials to log in. My username and password have been entered here. And that brings us to the NetSuite dashboard. As you can see, I've logged in to the purchasing and inventory managers role for this video. And this role has been given access to all the procurement to pay as well as inventory related functionality. The first thing that you can notice is that the dashboard has been customized for this particular user. I'm using this layout with three columns. The first column has reminders, KPI meters, some trend related graphs. The middle column has KPIs, navigation portlets, so on and so forth. And the third column has inventory trend, shortcuts, so on and so forth. Every user may customize it based on whatever his requirements may be, whichever functionality he uses on a regular basis and what functionality or what data he wants to see when he logs into the application first time. Since this is the inventory manager's role, he also has access to some drop-down menus which are specific to his role, some activities, shipping related functionality, receiving inventory reports and so on and so forth. A different role will have different menus to be accessed. And role-based functionality is a security feature in NetSuite where you can restrict which roles have access to which kind of data and who accesses which transactions, so on and so forth. Every organization may define their own f definition of a role and they can define which functionality each role has access to. As of now, these are the roles that I have access to in this organization and our functionality today will be based on the inventory manager's role. In this video, we're going to see the demand planning functionality in NetSuite. Demand planning allows you to project the demand for an item or a list of items based on its historical demand or existing sales order. For that, we've logged into the inventory manager role in NetSuite and I'm going to use the demand planning functionality and click on item demand plans. This brings me to the item demand plan screen. Here you can see a lot of filters are available. You can filter by subsidiary or location or sub item type. We're going to use a new demand plan, which means we're going to create a new demand plan using calculate item demand plans option. I'm clicking here. To calculate an item demand plan, there are some mandatory fields to be filled like subsidiary, the location that you're going to plan for. I'm going to select US West DC, the projection method, there are several options available here. The linear regression method gives you a trend of your demand. It could be rising or decreasing based on whatever demand historically has been uh, uh, taking place for this item. The moving average option gives you an average demand per month based on the historical data. The sales forecast uses, your actually, uses actually your sales orders, your existing sales orders in your system and gives you the demand based on those sales orders. And a seasonal average is similar to a linear regression, only thing it takes a seasonal spikes into consideration based on uh, the seasonality of the item. For our example here, we're going to use a linear regression option. You can also select the projection interval. It could be a weekly or a monthly projection. I'm going to use monthly. Here, the system asks for a projection duration. So this uh, tells the system how many months you must plan for in advance. So I'm going to select six. So the system will give me a projection of demand for the next six months. You can also enter how many months you want to take into consideration for your historical analysis. I'm going to enter 12. So the system will take into consideration the demand for the last year. And over here below, you can select the items for which you want to create a forecast. You can select one or multiple items depending on your current requirement. I'm selecting one item here, select Samsung Galaxy Note and I'm going to click on submit. This will create a demand plan for that item. System gives two options here to either overwrite current quantities or to not overwrite current quantities. If I choose to overwrite the current quantities, any existing demand plans will be overwritten with a new demand plan that I calculate based on the criteria I've selected right now. 
or I can select the first option to do a side-by-side -side comparison of two uh, demand plans based on different criteria. I'm going to select the second option and click on Submit. And now I'm on this screen of item demand plans. I can see that a demand plan was calculated just now. This was for Samsung Galaxy Note. I can view the demand plan by clicking on this. And here you can see there are some monthly calculated demands for the next six months. You can see period start dates are January, February, March, April, May and June. And this is the projection that system has created based on the historical data. NetSuite also allows you to manually enter some data in case you have some additional information like a lead from a customer saying that there might be a sales order that you might uh, be able to get for 100 quantities in May. So I could manually put a quantity here and save it. I can go back and view the demand plan and see that the quantity here is 100 because I've manually edited it based on the lead that I have from a customer. And that's how we can create a demand plan for an item in NetSuite. This demand plan can now be used against an item supply plan to create uh, supply uh, orders like purchase orders. And we'll see that in a separate video. Thank you.